Okay, so I guess, well, you know, out of respect for Denise and uh, Kira, we're just going to start, Matthew, and we'll just do our little spiel and stop us anytime. You can write in the chat or uh, um, or just ask us a question. There's a lot, there's a lot of people here. And hopefully, we'll get you the right answer. So you're up, Matthew. Go ahead. Alrighty. So this was a workshop we developed last year and then it uh, further uh, developed this year um, for our ed, our, um, uh, sorry, pet, our pet consultants network um, for the Anglophone sector. Um, so this is brought to you by, um, it's an EPC workshop, but it's in collaboration with the Keep Shuck, and you'll learn what a Keep Shuck is in a minute, and also uh, the RACI. So here's our agenda. We're going to talk to you um, just about what we do in general, um, adult ed in general, uh, and andragogy versus pedagogy. We've got a roadmap of uh, different services available in adult ed, and then we get into the specifics of those services. And then, of course, there's a Q&A with questions that folks had send in advance, but you're also free to ask any questions um, once we get there. But it's a pretty chill presentation. So um, if you want to uh, unmute and ask questions at any time, you can totally do so. Absolutely. Okay, right. so Julie, you are up. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, so hi, everyone. Julie Robitaille from Equipe Shock Pedagogical. Uh, I am ped consultant for the uh, English Network, and I cover, uh, my mandate is to cover languages and social sciences. And my job today is to talk about the difference between pedagogy and andragogy. Uh, if we wanted to uh, to look at this in a in a nutshell and to summarize, uh, I think the easiest way for uh, for everybody to understand pedagogy versus andragogy is to look at um, the the how it's centered. Okay, for example, if you've ever taught at the youth center, if you've ever been a pedagogue or uh, worked at that level, you will have noticed that a lot of times it starts with the teacher. Uh, the sage on a stage or the guide on the side, but nonetheless, the teacher and the information and the teaching is directed towards the students. Whereas in andragogy, uh, it's a mix of a little bit of teacher driven, a lot of student driven, and everyone contributes. And you see the arrows pointing to the center because the goal is shared by all the participants. So andragogy is word for word, teaching adults, but in this case, it's everybody is really responsible for their learning and they put in uh, what is necessary for the learning to occur. So more specifically, if you look at the components uh, of, of uh, pedagogy and andragogy, then you can see the difference. For example, the planning, the need diagnosis and the objective setting in pedagogical setting done by the teacher. In an andragogical setting, we would do this by mutual assessment, mutual assessment of needs versus uh, just the teacher going with the program and looking at the objectives from something that's, uh, I would say, top down, if you will. The learning is designed in logical sequence for pedagogy and sequenced by readiness when it, when it comes to andragogy. The learning activities are given through a transmittal technique, mostly. Whereas in the andragogy uh, sector, it would consist of projects, modules, process of inquiry, experiment. Again, referring back to what I said the, in, in our uh, earlier slides, where the, te the teaching is not done by one person, but everybody contributes to uh, their learning. And the evaluation in uh, pedagogy is done by teacher and graded on a curve. Some subjects, of course, do not uh, have a curve, but nonetheless, you know, graded by teachers, evaluated by teachers, and so on. Whereas in andragogy, it's done through a learner, collected evidence, validation by peers, experts, and even uh, self-evaluation is, uh, is used at this point. So this is taken from uh, James Bryson. Uh, he was he's a he's a um, a very very well known writer um, in the field of uh, engagement, student engagement, and his four precepts, if you will, uh, are teaching is dialogue, learning is engagement, growth is discovery, and knowledge is application. But if you look at everything that he uh, believes in, you will realize that you can just turn it upside down 
change it up and then teaching is dialogue will become dialogue is teaching and then learning is engagement becomes engagement is learning growth is discovery becomes discovery is growth knowledge is application becomes application is knowledge and they are all equally true so the short text between each uh, of the two uh, each of the precepts for example explain very well how each pair of words can go back and forth and be turned uh, turned upside down or turned around and nonetheless mean uh, mean a lot in in uh, the, in this engagement. Okay, I'm going to take it over from here. Um, just just I just want to chime in here because um, go ahead. a lot of things I've sort you know um, I've. I've had, you know, it's, it's been a summer. I've had a, the time to think about things and then gearing up for this presentation, I was thinking a lot about like the pedagogy versus andragogy mm -hmm. um, aspect. And what's interesting to me is that so much of um, this, whether we're talking, you know, um, about Bryson or, or any other, you know, um, writers or educational theorists is that a lot in adult ed, you know, has we've, we've operated this way for a long time um, or um, at least the theory has. Um, so, you know, uh, I'd say that sometimes we think in adult ed, we're sort of like behind in sort of developing new techniques and new approaches. Um, and I venture that if, if you showed me these slides, I say, that sounds like how it's done in the youth sector. And I'm like, yeah, that happened with education reform, of course, right? But that's also something we've been doing in adult ed for a long time. Like that theory, um, uh, these theories um, aren't new. Okay, and this approach to adult education or education is not is not new. So I think I'm just developing or rediscovering sort of an appreciation for that and the work that we do um, as as teachers in the field. Because uh, you know I think a lot of us didn't get this training in teachers college, right? So to finally to see it and say, hey, we actually kind of have always been doing that and do it kind of intuitively in our settings. I think there's like you know some power in that. So I just wanted to share that and acknowledge that. Okay, so back on uh, track, right? So I'll, I'll get on the roadmap here. Um, there's a lot of acronyms in adult ed and we wanted to not only sort of like decipher those for you, um, but sort of show you how they all work together. Okay, uh, so in education and in adult ed, I think in particular, we do throw around a lot of acronyms. Okay, so on the roadmap here, we kind of put the acronyms in the associated you know, organizations or communities in the order in which you would like most likely encounter them, if that's if that's fair. Okay, so EPC English Ped Consultants, that's kind of your first stop, because of course you have your center consultant, but the chances are your center consultant is a part of the English Ped Consultants network. Okay, um, next up you have a keep shock. Now a keep shock is a much um, for for is a much smaller team. We have, um, we have Julie, right? Um, and uh, we, we have Michelin and that's for the province, okay? So we'll get into that a little bit more in a second, but you have access to them. Everyone can get help from them for their specific subjects, but they're kind of past the, the, central, the, the central level and, and, and you know, beyond the EPC level, even though they're both part of the EPC, okay? Um, then there's uh, Le Récit. Okay, so uh, Mark is one of the consultants for RACI, and you probably also know Abby Spector. So these are your RACI people, okay? Um, and I think many of you have probably worked with them in the past. They're quite accessible, but in terms of who you would work with most frequently, they're really, their mandate is more technology. So that's why they're not like necessarily your first stop. Usually your center consultant or your EPC consultant would connect you with a keep shock and racy. Um, the next stop is AJAC. Now AJAC is um, a, a provincial table of administrators and there's some consultants who are involved uh, with AJAC, but mostly it's an admin body. And then even higher up, there's proceed. Okay, and that's strictly, um, uh, uh, directors. Okay, there are some consultants who sit on it or are invited to share reports, but that's really an organization for uh, directors. Now, I want to point out to two other little um, pit stops you might make. There's the service éducative complémentaire. 
So um, Karen Jacques will be the, the contact there and we can set you up with her. She's really for complimentary services and adult ed for the whole province, but mostly Francophone sector. But we've included her there because she's been so generous with her time in providing tips and strategies to us as consultants. And that sort of makes its way down to, uh, to the teachers and, and teaching support staff. And another pit stop is the Quebec Social Integration Network. So that is uh, specifically for social integration teachers and socio-vocational integration teachers. And it's an open network. People can join the meetings. We have projects every year, um, but it's a kind of a smaller pit stop because it's not as uh, all encompassing as say a keep shock or AJAC. We're really just talking about SI and SVI there. So those are the main organizations. Mark, you have a, a question or point of clarification perhaps. No, I just wanted to mention that um... You know, we do uh, very much work together. And uh, RISC and the QCSI network have a long history of working together. Uh, and all of, well, myself included, we all believe in, in this network. And you say it's small, but that you really do do big things. And, and that we feel the, that reverberation around the, uh, around the network. And I think it's just great to have a place for SI teachers to go to kind of work together and you know talk to one another. And so bravo for that. Um, and obviously we also work with, with everybody else, but we'll get to that later. Okay, so start. I'm gonna start um, deciphering these uh, acronyms for you. So EPC, English Ped Consultants. Okay, who's involved? Uh, we've got the center consultants, RACI, Equipe Shock. Our current projects, um, we've got the Apple Core. So this is our first one of the year. And then we'll get uh, to more specific topics than just general adult education going forward, including subject specific um, EPCs as well. Our uh, mandate with EPC uh, is to identify teacher needs, uh, create interactive workshops and provide individual coaching and then organize provincial PD. An example of that provincial PD is the blended learning um, initiative and website. So you could speak to your center consultant in case you're interested in that. The project is in its second year and we are still taking uh, on uh, new recruits for that. And again, your contact would be your center pet consultant. Chances are they're on EPC. Okay, like keep shock pedagogical. Um, their mandate is to help in the production of content, curriculum and evaluation tools. Okay, for all programs except for SI, right, Julie? At the time, until the new program is uh, is deposited and ready to go, that's it. That's exactly it. But when we do get the new program, when it is ready to uh, ready to go and up on the uh, up and running, then it'll be in uh, in our mandate. Yes, I was told two weeks ago that it'll be ready in three weeks. So yes. I'm okay. I'm holding my breath for uh, you know uh, the francophone version, but the English of version. course, but um, it has been translated. I can yes. attest to that. Yep. Um, so you can see their current pro uh, workshops for uh, L'Equipe Shock, um, the, re the resources they've created, but check out their newsletter, okay? If you haven't signed up for the Equipe Shock newsletter, do so. It doesn't matter what you're teaching. They, uh, I mean, of course it matters, but they send resources that are relevant to all, okay? If you're teaching SI, they send you great stuff that you could use if you're working on French or English or math with your students. So don't think that it's just for pure academics if you're teaching something else. Yeah. Um, and then your contacts are Michelin and uh, Julie's here today presenting. And just so you know, the little the little arrow on each screen, that's so you can go back to the home page if you're actually navigating the uh, roadmap or exploring, I should say. No, navigating works. Uh, Mark? Yeah, just uh, Kira had a question and, and just we're just clarifying. So, you know, we said into the mic for part for posterity. So from what I understand, once the program is done, you're in. Is that it? That's it. Yes. There yes. you go. Yep. And you so, can always call us too. We're nice. You know. <laughs> yeah. And, and as soon as it drops, like one of the first things I'm doing is going to be um, texting Julie and Michelin, like, okay, when are we yep. meeting? Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. So, uh, RACI AGE, so RACI AGE. So, what does RACI stand for? Re uh, Réseau Education, Collaboration, Innovation, Technology. So it's kind of like franglais there. Um, and then AG is Adult General Education. 
their mandate is to um, uh, produce and disseminate and promote relevant resources for the use of technology. So again, um, both Mark and Avi have expertise and lots of knowledge and experience outside of tech, but that is their uh, responsibility. But I guess I'm just letting you know that if you do work with them on tech projects, there are going to be other things that you learn as well. And they have, um, I know Mark is big on like behavior management and classroom management is one of his, his uh, additional passions. So you'd be getting more than support with technology. Um, and their current projects, so they have center and teacher support, they've got a digital action plan resources. Um, Avi is really focusing on accessibility and inclusive technology, and um, also just uh, communication. Okay, so uh, I'm sure you've heard of RACI and seen some of the awesome things they've done, uh, everything from resource creation to providing uh, training has been uh, really valuable to me uh, in the past and I think most of you and check out their website the website is like a thing of beauty aesthetically but just easy to navigate to yeah we worked hard on that yeah. you sure did it definitely shows okay on to AJAC adult general education committee so again this is mostly going to be administrators involved with this but there are consultants who do some presentations in there if you ever had something to bring to an AJAC table, you'd speak to your center director, that would be your contact. And usually they meet five times a year, some are with consultants, some without, but AJAC is also still kind of working out some structural elements. But it's a, it's a, it's a good way for folks to know what's happening in other centers. And I've always appreciated it in terms of connecting with others across the province. Okay, proceed. So again, this is the, this is the provincial organization of continuing education directors, comma English. I was very proud of myself when I learned that acronym um, and was able to demonstrate my knowledge of it at a meeting once. I impressed a lot of people. I'm totally joking, by the way, it's pretty nerdy knowledge, um, but Proceed is a great organization. Uh, there's an annual conference um, this year. Uh, we we're able to do it in person um, and we get a bunch of consultants and, and teachers, to, uh, sorry, consultants and administrators together from across the province for kind of think of it as like QPAT, but for your admins and your consultants in adult ed. Okay, so we're that's actually happening, not next week, but the week after. So pretty pumped to see um, colleagues in person again. Okay, um, and uh, the current projects are um, the overseeing development and delivery of curriculum and programming policy policies so like all the stuff that we don't really want to worry about proceed takes care of for, uh, for us so that's very much appreciative uh, appreciated and also they um, their uh, proceeds a good organization for sharing news in adult ed provincially um, check out their social media pretty active on there and um, proceeds really good about sharing things that we're doing in our classroom like if you've done a cool project and it's made it to your center's Facebook page it's probably been shared by proceed so it really is a good way for connecting folks across the province. And if you want to um, contact Proceed, you can consult the directory, but best to go through your um, administrators. Here are the acronyms. I'm not gonna go through them all, okay? But they're there. So if we've thrown around words, you know, consultants are very guilty of that. Um, DBE, BIM, LES, TREAC, Right um, here, it's uh, decoded for you, so you can explore the links and um, uh, you see what's on offer at each of these uh, organizations, or what some of these terms mean that we sort of drop casually, but uh, should probably explore the meaning of. Okay, EPC action plan. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, part of the EPC, the Edu English Pedagogical Consultants, and I'm. Uh, the chair, which basically makes me the communication officer. I don't have much more power than that being a chair. And these, as you can see, are the members of our uh, EPC committee. And it's a fair representation of all the English school boards uh, across Quebec. It's, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's the majority of them. So there you have it. And as you can see, Kipshock and Risi are a vital part of EPC and what we do uh, provincially. We collaborate and uh, cooperate what we found and uh, continue to uh, serve teachers as best we can uh, by designing workshops. If we can go to the next slide, please. Yeah. So our mandate, as is written there, is pretty much what I just said right now, and it helps coordinate support for adult education teachers within the nine of the school boards of Quebec. And the 
biggest puzzle there is to identify teachers needs which tend to vary sometimes from centers to centers uh, but the realities tend to overlap quite a bit uh, quite often and uh, with the advent of covid that's forced online uh, teaching to come into play over the last couple of years that's going to be forming the basis of our project last year and this year which is something called blended learning <clears throat> and the blended learning environment is exactly this where we last year we explored some of the basic tenets of blended learning and some of the theories and had quite a few teachers tell us about some of their pains and some of their gains throughout the process of uh, teaching online or being in the class with some students at home and the different realities that we had there and that exploration really yielded a lot of uh, techniques and strategies that really try to be true and prove well. So basically, we're trying to combine sound pedagogy uh, with the integration of technology whenever possible. And of course, we have our IPA Cools, which is what you're participating in today. And Mekib Shock has mentioned the subject-specific IPA Cools. And this kind of IPA Cool here, we kind of call it the cross-curricular type of IPA Cools. This is the uh, the one and the only slide that uh that I decided to put in that shows how Ikipshak really uh, targets their support of the nine school boards out there. First of all, you should know that there are uh, four Ikipshak out there. There is Likipshak that has been existing for a very long period of time, which serves the, Frank, the French uh, school boards. There is us, the uh, Ikipshak pedagogical, Michelin Amar and myself, uh, that share uh, the, the load in terms of the English workshop uh, network, sorry. Then you have the, the uh, Ikipshak First Nation and Inuit, who are, of course, dedicated to our First Nation uh, communities. And Ikipshak uh, SEC, which is Service Educative Complementaire, Karine Jacques and her uh, colleagues are part of it. Why do I mention the four Ikipshak? It's because if ever, you had a need that us, Michelin or I, could not address. We would definitely uh, pass the, you know, sp spread the word, pass the message along to our uh, our uh, colleagues, and get the the information that you need or the help that you need through. Because it's a network. It's not just a single, uh, you know, a single operation out there. We don't do everything all by ourselves. We do have colleagues that work with us and that are very helpful uh, in that respect. So in a nutshell, again, we have three specific, um, specific portions to our support. We, of course, assist, we collaborate, and we communicate. So in the assistance portion of what we do, it's about the implementation and the development of the programs, whether they are older programs or programs that already exist or brand new ones, like, for example, the one that just started a few weeks ago with History of Quebec and Canada. Uh, we also assist in the elaboration and the development of subject-specific material and evaluation tools, whether they are, again, existing or brand new. We can help in that as well. And we give training sessions and workshops. Uh, we have four that are pretty much turnkey, that are pretty much you know, done that we always fine tune, of course, but that are ready, uh, ready to go. One on engagement, one on differentiation in a high flex setting, one on bridging the academic gap that exists uh, mostly uh, and mo more, more recently with, with regards to COVID. And also the strategies of justification and explain where we look at the literacy that is applied to pretty much all of the subjects out there. Even science and math have literacy. So justify and explain strategies are also part of uh, what we do and what we offer as workshops. Uh, we will, uh, you can find our service offer form on our website and I put the website into our chat a few minutes ago. In terms of collaboration, well, again, we collaborate in the elaboration of material. So we sometimes sit with teams, working groups, and help in uh, the actual production of material or assessment tools. We also sometimes start working groups where we let teachers work and we just oversee uh, the work that they do because they don't need us necessarily. And we uh, like to try and expand on existing tools, bettering them, uh, changing them up, uh, adapting also uh, to uh, to what's going on and the you know the, mo the most current uh, updated 
material we can find. In terms of communication, we dispense information and services through our website and our newsletter, but we also do that on a more personal basis where you can write to Michelin or myself. Uh, of course, you go through your uh, pedagogical consultant to do that, and they will direct you to, uh, to us, and we can also communicate that way. We give you updates from ministry, uh, info sanction, things that are out there that need to be communicated. We try to be as recent and updated as we possibly can. We also communicate information regarding other workshops and training opportunities, for example, that are offered by our uh, partners. Okay, and that's all on our um, on our newsletter. So you can, and by the way, you can find the newsletter onto our website. It's very clearly identified, so no problem finding it. And of course, subject specific après cours. Uh, I take care of languages and social sciences, and my colleague Micheline is in charge of sciences and mathematics. So that's pretty much Equipe Chef Pedagogical for you in three minutes. All right, so it's up to me. So, uh, hello everyone, Mark Arapi. Uh, I am an education consultant with Tracy. I'm not gonna show you our entire service offer. It's long and uh, there's a lot of stuff in there, but just know that we're here working for you. I will talk about our four cogs. So you'll notice that there are four spheres of influence that we kind of work in uh, being center support. So that uh, is where we go into centers and we try to work on small projects or if there's a particular problem, we work on those two uh, resources, so student-facing resources that that uh, are in line with the digital action plan and the digital competency. Inclusive technology is more Avi's bag. He's working on that now. He's got a five-year uh, mandate. He's in his second year doing very well. And I take care of all the communications, networking, all the stuff nobody else wants to do. So <laughs> just switch to the next one. Uh, and so I know that you may know this or not, but there used to be four of us, and now there are just two. So we're looking for friends. Um, no, I, I think that that process is in, is uh, has started, and hopefully we'll have uh, people to replace our two um, colleagues, Emily Bowles, who left us at the end of the last uh, academic, academic year, and Giovanna Salvaggio, who uh, whose last week is this week, and she'll be starting next week. Uh, as a receipt also, but in First Nations and Inuit, in the First Nations Inuit sector. So here you have sort of a summary of um, what it is that the COGS represent. As new people come on, we're going to shuffle things around uh, with the two first mandates and see how that's going to work out. But understand that we work as a team. So for instance, I am working at, at PAC right now with uh, Sheila. Uh, working on a little project for blended learning. Uh, so you might see my face or Abby's face, uh, even though you're maybe expecting somebody else, but we're gonna try and work around these things. We, we have our own mandates to, to work on, but uh, uh, give us a call and, and uh, we'll find a way to, to help you for sure. So uh, Karine, as we had said before, she works out of uh, our school board again, Julie and my school board, the CSSME. Um, in service educative complementaire. She is a font of knowledge when it comes to uh, inclusive uh, technology, uh, learning disabilities, accessibility. It just goes on and on and on and on. She's very, very well versed in that. And her mandate uh, extends to both the French and English sectors in both uh, AGE and uh, VT. So wherever it is that you need some sort of help with, uh, with uh, inclusive technologies or just in inclusion to begin with, then you're more than welcome to, uh, to speak with Karin. You can go through your, your center, dire uh, center director, your center consultant or school board consultant, or uh, you can also write to her directly. She's always up for, um, for helping people out in both uh, sides of the, of the networks. Uh, resource teams, uh, there you go. And that's it. Oh, well, that you've already seen. Uh, and now we have questions. So these came to us. Um, we're very happy to be able to answer your questions. What about all those acronyms? So we heard a little, some of the acronyms have, have, been, uh, have been explained. Matthew did a fantastic job. Um, the question was uh, the distinction between CCBE and DBE. There's somebody who's actually taught 
in adult education want to explain that because that wasn't my bag. So, I mean, I can say that um, social integration is 100% considered part of adult general education. Um, and in terms of CCBE um, and DBE, I don't know if Julie, uh, it might be better for you to clarify since that's more your uh, department. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, well, in, in um, if we put it in the simplest form and the simplest way possible, CCBE is pretty much uh, the equivalent of the elementary, pre-secondary, and first cycle of secondary uh, levels of um, of teaching, and when you it's DBE is more uh, sec three, four, and five, the equivalent of sec three, four, and five in uh, adult uh, education. That's pretty much what it is. So, Common Core basic education and diversified basic education. There we and go. This answers the question. And if this is if this is helpful, credits towards your high school diploma would start with DBE. DBE, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay, there you go. Another Sorry helpful distinction. Well, just just so you don't feel alone, Kira. Uh, I had to figure it all out in English and in French, and it took me a while. So it's a, a different sort of way of thinking. But once you figure it out, it, it kind of makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. I guess we can go to the next question. I'll feel this one. Okay. Ask your principal or HR professional. We, we have no feeling <laughs> on this whatsoever. Okay, next one, I guess. So, um, okay, so I hopefully we covered, Denise, like um, what adult ed is in a general sense um, in, the, in this province. Um, for severe mobility issues in LaSalle, um, interesting you make. Uh, you mentioned that I'm I'm working on developing something um, new, and as soon as I have information for the community, I'll share it. But I've been reaching out to stakeholders and community partners and health and social services, and this is very much a need that's been identified and one that we fully intend to um, attempt to meet uh, collaboratively in the community. So stay tuned, everyone, but you in particular, Denise. Okay. Um, I, I think Julie, you gave an answer here. No, yeah. actually, that was me. Or Mark? Okay, sorry. Yeah. False assumption. Um, well, I, I was, I was, you know, fixing it, and then I said, well, let, let me have a look. Now, I guess I don't know if you want to click on it or not, but this is a website I found. I've looked through it. It seems to me that uh, copyright does not seem to be an issue. There are um, links to you to YouTube. Everything looks okay to me, but you can just at least have a look. Uh, there are a series of plays that have been vetted by this website, and there are also activities involved. Now, there are some paying parts, but where it says free stuff, you can have a look. So anybody who's uh, teaching in uh, 5101, that was one thing I found, but I bet you Judy has a better answer than me. Not necessarily better, but let's say complimentary. If you if you don't mind, um, I, I'm currently working on a um, a list of uh, of plays uh, that can be used for 5101 Canadian and otherwise, of course, um, and they will be available soon on our age resource website. Uh, in uh, in the tab resource, you just click on ELA, and then you'll find. Uh, English 5101, and there will be information there. So I am working, currently working on that, and as, as well on a novel, lists of novel for uh, the SEC 4 level. And of course, if you need any more, any more material, help with finding material, help uh, trigger the little spark, you know, light that little spark to go, oh, yes, that's a good idea. Then maybe uh, putting our heads together is a good idea. So don't hesitate and reach out for, for the Yekip Shuk. Yeah, sure. I just wanted to mention one approach to it that you can with administrators when it comes to a, um, the purchasing of, of these plays. Uh, it's just like any other text. Sometimes we're, we're, we're quick to buy soul fat books and we're quick to buy uh, any other class sets of novels like you just mentioned. Uh, it's the same thing with these plays. Uh, if you can convince your administration to say, look, once you purchase them, you keep them at like a, at a bank, even if you purchase one or two. Uh, the thing is with 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 plays, uh, it's money well spent. Uh, it's the, you, you'll see that it, it looks very professional and looks much better and it's of great quality. So kind of go at them with the same. And if there were more teachers here involved, uh, present, I would be saying exactly that. This is what I've been doing. This is the pressure I've been putting. It's like, why not purchase these plays? It becomes part of the repertoire for the course. 
I think that might be it for questions um, that were sent in advance. Um, does anyone have questions um, right now? Okay. If there aren't any other questions, I think that that does it there. This is just the first, not this isn't the first Apply Core. It's the, the, the general one, but then we have subject specific. And then we also have, you know, more general interests like, um, uh, we've had things on wellness before. If you want to get a sense of what we did last year, I might, we'd set, share this previously, but um, Mark put together a really great summary of everything we covered last year. And you can still uh, go back and view them all. Um, I was joking with, a, with a, a, a friend who couldn't make it today. I said, well, you know what? You couldn't make this app like core, but you can go and watch it and do like a movie night with your family, right? If that's, you know, what, what, you know how you'd like to spend your evening go ahead because uh, Richard Pinchot uh, captures all of this for, for us and organizes it online and you can go back to all the archived app by course. And I think it's pretty cool. It's a lot of content, all for adult ed. And I don't know that you can really get that anywhere else. This is about it. We're all done. Thank you so much. Oh, it was an absolute pleasure. Thank you for coming. Okay. You're welcome, Kara. Thank you for coming. Bye now.